Okay, here we are. We're back at our database and we've got our other spreadsheet open now. So this is our spreadsheet that I've named, uh, I believe it is new stock. Let's maximize it and have a look. Um, new stock list and it's the Excel spreadsheet. As you can see, the data that we have here in our plant name doesn't correspond with anything that pre-exists in the database. So our aim is to take this new data that's been supplied to us with our new selling prices and add those down underneath the data that we already have. You'll notice that this data doesn't actually have the ID column or the ID field. The reason being, this is an auto number field. So what we expect is that every time a new record has gets added to here, then this will take over and it will create the new ID. Um, I have deleted quite a bit of data as I've been playing around with this database, so I can guarantee you that the next item ID will not be seven. It'll be interesting to see how many um, records I've actually deleted when we actually get this working. So here we go. So once again, I'm going to close down our spreadsheet so we've got access to it and go through exactly the same process that we went through last time when we were adding the updated prices external data. You can go to external data. Remember, we're over here in the import and link rather than the export. And we're selecting our Excel data file, which we'll browse to, new stock list. And again, we're going to link that data source by creating a linked table. So it's over here. Checking our data, checking that our first row on each of the columns is a heading. Yep, and we can see our data there. And yes, we do want to link it. Now, in my hurry to click finish, I didn't actually name it. Um, very common, but easy to fix. Just right click and go to rename and always give tables, forms, reports, uh, queries, everything a name that describes um, what the function of that part of the database is. Otherwise, you'll be tripping over yourself trying to find out what uh, each thing does. Um, so this is our data, which is our new stock list. Takes a little while to do that because it's dark in this room and I can't see my keyboard. There we go, new stock list. So I'm just gonna have a look and there we go. That's our linked data from our spreadsheet. So that's definitely worked. So again, we're going to create and we always use the query design rather than query wizard. And this is slightly different process from the last one. The last one, we actually brought two tables across into our query. Um, we're only going to be bringing this time our current items. So this is the data that exists in the database already. The reason being is at first, we're actually going to be um, Actually, I'm going to actually I'm going to completely change that and delete that. The data that we are going to bring over is actually the new stock list. And the reason being, what we want to do is actually select this data first. So we're actually going to go through the whole process for a select query. We're going to make sure that Access can select this data from here. So first thing we're going to be doing is getting the plant name and the selling price and then click run. And what we should do is obviously see the data that's in that spreadsheet. And that's just as it was before. I'm going to click the cross this time. So yes, we do want to save this and we're going to save this. We're going to call this um, append new stock query. Okay, so this is going to add new stock to the database and here we are but you see the icons are very different this is just a standard select query currently but now we've done it we can right click and go back into design view and go to append so we're actually changing the select query now to in, into an append query very simple it says append to table name so this is why we don't have the other table in here already because this is the process that tells or, or we tell access where we want this data to go to. So in table name, we can select our items table and click OK. 
So now this append to row has popped up that wasn't there before and this knows that it's going to be appending to the items table so when we click on the combo box it will say what do you want to um, what field do you want to append it to or add it to so we're looking at plant name here so we want that to be going into item name and selling price here we want to go into current price so the data in here will be added to this field and the data in here will be added to that field and believe it or not that's all there is to it so when we click run we say you're about to append eight rows now I know from my spreadsheet earlier that I'd actually created eight new plants this is something that really really you must check 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 you must know how many rows you're expecting to add to make sure you know to do that testing to make sure it's doing um, what it should do um, if you bring both tables in here so if you bring the items table in then this will be multiplied by however many items there are already in the table. Um, this is a problem that I had when I was rehearsing, going back through this, uh, and before I actually put that information onto your OneNote, it was multiplying everything by six. So it was expecting 48, well, it was actually going to append 48 rows. This is it, this is the way it needs to be. It's only going to add the number of rows that you've got new data of. So we click yes, okay, and that's happened. So I've already named the query. I can click that and say yes, I do want to change the changes we made. And now we can look back in our items and now we see how many actual records I've deleted. So we're going from six to quite a few hundred thousand. Um, but the data's there. It's whole, it's complete, it's got its prices, it's got its auto number ID, and you can see that's 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, and so on. So these are consecutive. Um, heavens knows why that's so big. But there we go. So that's all there is to it. We now know how to um, attach external data from a spreadsheet into a linked table. Um, the linked bit is that little blue arrow up there that says that it's a linked table. Um, we'll see these again later when we actually put our security on because all of these tables here will become linked tables but rather than from spreadsheets they'll be from a different database file which is called the back end so these will all become linked tables later um, we've got our new two queries we've got our update query and we've got our append query so 100% if you do these two things right and effectively then you would have absolutely nailed two parts of the assessment attaching external data and modifying data and adding to data in the table using queries so there we have it it's not too tough um, hopefully this um, video makes sense to you and you can follow this along don't forget that this all of this information is on the walkthrough uh, the tutorial on OneNote so you now have two resources that you can use uh, to make sure that you do this right every time um, as you can see, it's very, very quick. It's I've been recording this one for 8 minutes 33 seconds. So that's attaching the table and doing the query. So it shouldn't take long for you to build this database up like a star. Okay, I'll catch you again. Bye-bye.